Chapter 6. Programming and Debugging. In this section of the Radiant Introductory Training Series, we will discuss the general flow for programming a device, and debugging it on physical hardware. Chapter 6 consists of four sections. In the first section of the chapter, Programming Basics, we will review the general flow for programming a device using Radian. In section 2 of the chapter, Device Programming with Programmer, we are going to discuss Radian's programmer tool, and how it can be used to program a device. In the third section of the chapter, Debugging with Reveal Inserter, we will introduce Radian's Reveal Inserter tool, and discuss how it can be used to add debug cores to a design. Finally, in the fourth section of the chapter, called Debugging with Reveal Analyzer and Controller, we will discuss Reveal Analyzer and Controller, and how it can be used. Chapter 6, Section 2. Device Programming with Programmer. In this section of the video series, we will be reviewing the general flow for device programming, using Radiance Programmer tool. The first thing that we are going to discuss, is the general flow for using the Programmer tool. The first step in this flow, is to create a chain configuration file. As mentioned earlier in the video series, this file contains the settings for a programming session, and is automatically generated when the programmer is launched from Radian. The second step in the programmer flow, is to select a device. Once a device has been selected, the next step, is to configure the programming settings for that device. Finally, the last two steps in the programmer flow, are to select a programming file, and program the actual device. Now that we've reviewed the general flow for using the programmer tool, we are going to discuss each step in a little more depth, starting from the second step. To view additional information about the first step in this flow, check out Chapter 6, Section 1 of the video series. As mentioned before, once the programmer tool has opened, and a chain configuration file has been selected, the next step in the programmer flow is to select a device. To select a device to program, users should first select a family of devices, using the device family column. Selecting a device family will narrow down the list of device selections. To select a specific device to program, use the device field. The locations of these two settings can be seen in the figure on the slide. Another way a device can be selected, is using the programmer tool's scan device functionality. The scan device functionality, will automatically populate the device and device family settings fields for a row. In order for this feature to work, a physical device must be connected to a computer using some kind of programming cable, so it can be detected by programmer. There are two ways the scan device functionality can be initiated. The first way, is to use the scan device icon, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. The second way to scan for a device, is to select run from the programmer's menu bar, and then scan device from the drop-down list of options. If a device is detected by the programmer tool, its settings will be populated to the first row of the programmer tool. The third step in the programmer flow, is to configure the programming settings for a device. There are two ways the programmer settings for a device can be opened. The first way, is to double-click the field called operation, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. The second way, is to right-click anywhere in a device's row, and select the device properties option. Both of these methods work the same, and will open the properties window for a device. The device properties window should look like the figure on the slide, once it has opened. As can be seen from the figure on the side, this window has two tabs. The general tab is used to set up a device for programming, and the device information tab is used to view information about the selected device. To set up a device for programming, a target memory should first be selected for the device. This setting controls which of a device's memory are being programmed. The second setting that should be configured, is the port interface. This setting controls the communication interface used for device programming. The next thing that should be configured in this window, is the access mode. The selection made here, controls how a device is programmed. If a device is not already programmed, direct programming should be selected to directly program the device. The final selection that should be made in this window, is the operation setting. This setting controls the programming mode of operation. The programming mode of operation, controls what is going to happen when a device is programmed. For example, the default mode, fast configuration, erases and programs a device. While the erase only mode, 
will only erase a device's targeted memory. As mentioned in the beginning of the video, the final step in the programmer flow is to select a programming file. Depending on the selected operation, an additional programming file option may also be available in this window, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. The programming file selection will be available whenever a programming related mode is selected, like fast configuration, or a race verify program. To select a programming file, click the three dots icon next to the programming file field, and select the bitstream programming file that was generated by Radiant. Once users are done modifying the settings in this window, they should click the OK button to confirm any changes. Once a device has been selected and configured for programming, the final step in the programmer flow is to program the physical device. From the Programmer tool, there are two ways users can program a device. The first way to begin programming a device is to select the Program Device icon, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. The second method to program a device is to select the Run option from the menu bar, and then Program Device from the drop-down list of options. Both of these methods are the same, and will commence the device programming process. As a device is being programmed, messages and errors about the programming progress will be posted to the application output. One final thing to note is that program device will always be the final step in the programmer flow, regardless of the mode of operation. For example, if the erase only mode was selected in the device properties window, users would still need to program their device for their selection to matter. That concludes this section of the introductory training series. To view the next video in the chapter, select the video titled Section 6.3, Debugging with Reveal Inserter.